I'm Yuta Shimoda of the University of Tokyo. Today, I'd like to talk about flat foldable rigid origami with uniform thickness panels. In this paper, we present a novel design method of rigidly foldable origami composed of panels with uniform thicknesses. Our design is based on quadrilateral transformable mesh forming a family of corrugated surfaces that folds flat. We apply thickness to such a rigidly foldable surface by extending the axis shift method. Using our method, each panel ends up having uniform thickness. Rigid origami, which is the origami model composed of rigid panels and hinges, is useful for various engineering purposes, especially for designs of transformable architecture. Although origami models are mathematically considered to have a zero thickness surface, this is no longer true when applied to physical mechanisms. There are two major approaches. Tachi proposed an approach based on trimming panel volumes. This approach is universal in the sense that the origami kinematics of rigid origami is maintained. However, obtaining a completely flat folded state is not possible as the volume starts to block the folds. The other is an approach based on the shifting rotation. Hoberman proposed the axis shift method apply to mirror symmetric mirrorly vertices and chain extend it to non mirror symmetric vertices the structures can fall to a complete flat folded state without any interference the focus of existing approaches of thick rigid origami was limited to developable origami surfaces however for architectural applications the developability of the entire surface is not necessarily required because the, the assembly of multiple parts is necessary due to the available size of the panel materials. In this paper, we extending the axis shift approach to non-developable rigid origami. We use a mesh composed of degree 4 vertex with equal opposite sector angles. Such surfaces are known as discrete both surface and known to be rigid foldable. The surfaces are not necessarily developable, but have one DOF mechanism that folds flat. In our method, each panel ends up having a uniform thickness. There is no unevenness and the thickness is the same everywhere, even for each panel. This is a novel property and the resulting structures efficiently folds up to completely flat states with 180 degrees fold angles, wherein the total thickness is the sum of the thickness of overlapping panels. Shifted axis change the kinematics of rigid origami from a spherical linkage to a spatial linkage, so the method applies to limited types of vertices satisfying conditions between thickness and the sector angles. In this presentation, we first review the kinematics of discrete both surface with zero thickness and a condition for the sector angles to make it rigidly foldable. Then we shall demonstrate methods for constructing thickness that maintains the kinematics and formulate the conditions between the sector angles and the thickness. Based on the conditions, we explore design to show free form examples and symmetric shapes. Discrete both surfaces are quadrivalent meshes where each face is planar and the opposite angles are equal at each. We consider the family of discrete both surfaces with corrugation. In other words, the mountain and valley creases are alternately repeated. When the surface is corrugated in both the row and column directions, we obtain the generalization of equivox surfaces, often bidirectionally flat foldable without self intersection. Similarly, when the surfaces are corrugated only in the row direction, we obtain surfaces that are often one way flat foldable 
without an intersection. Each vertex is mechanism of one DOF, so in general, connect connecting these vertices into a mesh creates an over-constrained system and is not guaranteed to form a mechanism. The direct construction of such a rigid origami often requires numerical computation using optimization algorithms. However, in this study, we introduced an alternative approach using an analytical loop condition. In the past researches, Tachi pointed out the similarity between the mirror and the discrete wall surface. And Tachi and Hal showed the rigid folding condition for the mirror With reference to these, we derived the loop constraint as shown. For each interior face, the sector angles around it satisfy the loop condition. We have now obtained the conditions of rigid foldability of discrete wall surfaces with zero thickness. Next, we propose a method to add thickness to these surfaces. For thickness accommodation based on the axis shift method, we first classify the vertices based on the mountain and valley assignment or MV assignment of the oppositing pairs. When sum of two sector angles alpha plus beta is smaller than 180 degrees, the MV assignment for all creases are the same. We call them convex vertices. When alpha plus beta is larger than 180 degrees, and thus the MV assignment of opposite pairs are opposite, we call them saddle-like vertices. When alpha plus beta is 180 degrees, it is developable vertices that can fold in both assignments, so either type can be applied. When adding thickness to convex vertices, we can add the thickness on the convex side of the vertex to ensure that all fold lines still intersect at one point. In this case, the mechanism is still a spherical forward mechanism. And thus, there are no additional requirements when adding thickness. When adding thickness to saddle-like vertices, an opposite pair of axes with mountain creases shift inward, and the other opposite pair with valley creases shift outward. This forms a spatial forward linkage, which is not generally a mechanism. Bennett linkage is the only known spatial forward linkage, and Chen applied Bennett linkage to developable degree for mirror vertices. We can similarly construct a Bennett linkage in our case by carefully choosing the thickness and the angles. Therefore, we obtain the constraints as shown. Transformable vertices satisfy conditions between thicknesses and the sector angles. When the vertices are developable, both convex and saddle-like types can be applied. When the convex type thickness is chosen, when the convex type is chosen, the oppositing pair have both mountains, while when the saddle-like type is chosen, the oppositing pairs have a mountain and valley. The folding motion of the vertex is singular, and no positing pair stays unfolded while the other pair continuously fold. These transforming and non-transforming pairs switch in the developed state. We set the design parameters at the sector angles at each corner and the thicknesses of each panels. Now, necessary and sufficient conditions for rigidly foldable structure can be obtained. These are the rigid foldability conditions for the zero thickness discrete wall surfaces. And this is additional condition for accommodation of thicknesses at each saddle-like vertex. When all these conditions are met, we obtain rigidly foldable discrete wall surfaces with thickness. We call the number of independent parameters we can choose 
the DOF of design. It can vary based on the numbers of panels and saddle-like vertices. We then use the DOF of design to evaluate the surface and explore the variety of forms that can be achieved. For example, when we consider the DOF of design of the mesh with 3 by 3 quadrangle panels, each of the four interior vertices has four sector angles. Each of the four interior vertices has two constraints. One interior panel has two constraints, and each of the two saddle-like vertex has one constraint. So the DOF for design is four. We can't control four parameters and change the form. We show you a variation of the form. This, on the left, is a very thick model with 3x3 three three panels, and this and this on the right are with 4x4 four four panels. The degree of freedom depends on whether you choose the egg box or bellows type, because the number of saddle-like vertices can change. Next, we consider the DOF of design of the mesh with M by N quadrangle panels. The DOF of design of egg box and bellows type is shown in the bottom. We obtain the hyperbolic form. For example, the equation of egg box type suggests that if m is smaller than 7, we can increase n arbitrarily while we still have design free freedom. However, when both m and n increase, the DOF becomes negative. In other words, the structure is over-constrained. Therefore, for a larger n and m, it is reasonable to find the design method assuming symmetry to make the constraints degenerate. We propose two design methods using symmetry. We demonstrate a simple design approach to create a cylindrical vault shape from a given arbitrary section polyline. The procedure to generate is as follows. Create an offset polyline by a constant width outward and moving it. Extrude and move the panels at the concave point to avoid self-intersection. You can connect these mechanisms like this. The overall structure can be constructed with panels of a single thickness because the four sector angles of every vertex are equal. If the polyline is properly corrugated, it is also possible to obtain structures that completely fold in two directions without self-intersection. We may choose a different width for each offset so that we may obtain a doubly curved surfaces as with varying heights and widths. For second example, we demonstrate a design approach using the mirror symmetry about two perpendicular planes. We can construct a bidirectionally flat foldable dome with 6x6 six six panels. The parameters are computed by solving the constraints for each quadrant composed of 3x3 three three panels, with constraints that the boundary must lie on the mirror planes. At each vertex on the mirror planes, the opposite and mirrored angles should be equal. Considering the thickness arrangement that can satisfy this condition, two types of thickness can be applied. The DOF of design is 4. Our method has an advantage for architectural fabrication. Because each panel has a constant thickness, it can be produced by only cutting out the panels using a two-axis CNC or laser cutter. The property that the structure falls completely flat is also useful for the assembly of panels. In the assembly process, we can stack the panels in its flat folded state and attach hinges from the exposed sides of panels. Once we obtain the flat folded shape with every architectural component prefabricated, we can transport it to the building site and deploy it. After its use, the structure can be completely folded again and stored 
for later reuse. Thank you for listening.